All right, let's go ahead and pray. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful um, that you provide for us. Lord, uh, you being near to us is, is the very best thing in our life. And God, we're so thankful that, that you love us, not on the basis of how good we are. The basis of your care for us is, is not our religious performance or even our, our moral performance. The basis for your care for us is, is the commitment that you've made to us and that you showed to us in sending Jesus to pay the price for our sin on the cross. That's, that's, that, that is a 100% commitment to our good and to demonstrating your faithfulness and your character. And you promise to never leave us and never forsake us, even on our worst day. Oh God, we're so thankful for that. Help us to love one another the way that you love us. And help us to understand your ways so that in keeping them, we're, we're blessing our neighbors and bringing you honor. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've been continuing to uh, look through this book called The American Covenant, The Untold Story. And for those of you who may be joining in uh, for maybe one of the very first times, we're on day 51 of our 100-day plan. And that was inspired at the very beginning of this year when uh, I remembered that there's a long-standing tradition among presidents to lay out their 100-day plan for the nation. And with the way things have been going for the last uh, year or so, uh, rather than get discouraged and hope for someone in government to turn things in a positive direction, why not come up with our own plan? And so we've been meeting for 51 days now with a campfire to pray and to praise God and to return to the ancient covenants of our forefathers, like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, and Moses and King David. And of course, uh, Jesus uh, initiates the new covenant, which is an eternal covenant with promises from God that will never be revoked for the family of faith. And our forefathers here in, in, in this country of America, made sacred covenant promises with God. And that is what has led to our blessing, I believe. And I think history proves that, that covenant keepers win and covenant breakers lose. And to the extent that we honor God and we love one another and we keep his commands in all aspects of our life, not just personally, but in our, in our homes, in our churches, with our economy, and even with our government, we have the promise of blessing and security and prosperity in kingdom terms when we follow God's ways. And that's what we're endeavoring to get back to in this 100 day plan uh, for the security of those blessings. So we've been talking about property. We've been talking about who rules the world. We've been talking about uh, boiling frogs and uh, all, kind, <laughs> all kinds of crazy things. And uh, I wanna, I want us to, take a look one more time at this idea of how you view your stuff and your property. Uh, the way we're going to do this is by looking back at two groups of people in early America, the pilgrims up north in Cape Cod and then down south in Jamestown. These are two parent colonies. These are the groups who came here very early on in the early 1600s, and they viewed property very differently. And the contrast is something that you and I can see going on today with people who have different views of uh, who owns your stuff and how you ought to be uh, providing for your family. Okay. So uh, if you think about the pilgrims. The pilgrims were self-governing members of the family of faith. They believed that everything that they had, including their life, their, their children, uh, uh, their, their creativity, their, uh, their strength to work, uh, their, their moral character, their faith was all a gift from God. And they believed in self-government. That is, I shouldn't need a policeman to tell me what to do or threaten to punish me if I do the wrong thing. My heart is fully engaged in honoring God and I want to do the right thing from the heart. And I, and I don't want to do the wrong thing because I wouldn't want to bring dishonor to God or harm my neighbor. That was what the pilgrims were all about. And they came to this new world with the idea of supporting themselves, working hard, uh, 
of, of, of making a living by planting their crops and by making friends with uh, the Native Americans and having voluntary unions supporting themselves. And never did they steal corn from the Indians or force them at the point of a sword to trade with them. They, be they trusted in God's blessing if they did the right thing. And that led to their great, great success. They understood private enterprise. They weren't depending on the government to take care of them, but they were going to be inventive and industrious, creative, work hard, and then enjoy the fruit of their labors. Now, in Jamestown, you got a big contrast. You had people of faith there. They were members of the family of faith there. However, there were many, many people who came to Jamestown with a very different attitude. They came, uh, as Dr. Foster says here, uh, as hard-bitten soldiers as fortune, uh, men of fortune, uh, people running from the English law. I like to call these the, uh, the Monopoly men. Uh, you ever play the game Monopoly? Uh, fun family game. And, 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 and what's, what's the best thing you can do on Monopoly? I mean, what's everyone going for? Well, you're trying to get uh, those great pieces of property, uh, Park Place, uh, Broadway. You're trying to, uh, you know, capture those pieces of land that are most desirable. And you really want to pass go so as many times as possible so you can collect $200, right? That, that's always great. And you want the secret card, right? It's the get out of jail free card. You had people who were running from the law in England trying to get out of jail, trying to, to, to stay away from the law, you had people coming as opportunists who were looking to secure land. They wanted to grab the land, even if it meant that they were gonna take it, seize it by force and steal it. And those who were looking for instant fortune, they wanted to get rich quick scheme. They were going for the gold and other treasures, okay? Without really having to work hard for it. Not all of them, but many of them. I call them the opportunists. In contrast to the pilgrims, these guys were opportunists. They weren't heavenizers. The pilgrims were looking to heavenize the earth, to honor God, to make a living, support themselves, and have enough extra to give to the poor and help their neighbor. The opportunists, it was all about them. They were takers, not givers. They were suckers, not settlers. Suckers as in the leash the leech, sucking what they can off the land, off the Native American Indians, off other people. They would either steal someone's corn rather than plant their own corn, or they would force them at the point of the sword to trade with them rather than winning their friendship and their respect by loving and honoring their neighbor as themselves. Unlike the pilgrims who were there to settle the land, to cultivate the land, to build the land and heavenize the land. Very different motives and very different perspectives on their property. If you're an opportunist, you're just looking to take, take, take. If you're a settler, if you're a heavenizer, you're looking to give, 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 and to build and create and to be self-sufficient and have extra to give to others. This was the great difference. And then we found in Georgetown, I'm sorry, not Georgetown, Jamestown. Uh, George had a town too, and I guess James had a town. Uh, and, and their captain, John Smith, was with them, and he had to force them to work at the point of the sword. He said that their unruly behavior demanded strong external government. And that's what happens, right? If people are not willing to work and they'd rather steal, or rather force people to trade with them rather than producing their own goods, ultimately productivity goes down the drain and you don't have enough and now you gotta make men and women work. And that's what began to happen. And, and, and here's what, uh, what Dr. Foster says. He says that many of these colonists down in Jamestown were so profligate, so desperate that their country, England, was happy to throw them out as nuisances in society. Such persons were little capable of the strict financial practices uh, of being good with their money and persevering industry, their hard work, which their situation required. In other words, they couldn't handle the tough situation because they didn't have the internal character of heart and they didn't have the required faith and trust in God to follow his ways, even if it was difficult and it cost them much. 
they didn't understand and were not taught the blessings of self-government and free enterprise. You see, God's ways always work. And when we try to do an end run around them for quick gain, it never works. These are the things we need to be teaching our children. That God's ways are not the easy ways, but he does that on purpose to develop character in us. God loves hard work. God loves self-government. And civil government only works if self-government is in place and is healthy. That means you and I need to know how to do the right thing. You and I need to know how to depend on God so that we can follow his lead as he guides us through his word and with his spirit. And if we can teach our children how to do that, there is hope for this place. There is hope for blessing and freedom and prosperity enough to be able to give to those who are in need and to bless our neighbors. That's the whole idea. Lord, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Make heaven like earth. And God does it through his agents of transformation, the army of compassion, the family of faith, and that's you and me. Well, I'm headed out to the desert with my kids. I pray for us. We're going to be driving fast in razors. We're going to be sleeping uh, in an RV. And uh, we're going to be uh, under the stars. And I hope to have enough reception to meet you tomorrow evening and the evening after that from uh, the middle of the desert for days 52 and 53 of the American Campfire Revival. God bless you guys, and I hope to see you tomorrow night.